Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in the world. Hello and welcome to the Saturday, the 25th of August edition of EV News Daily. It's Martin Lee here with the news you need to know about electric cars and the move towards sustainable transport. And occasionally, on a Saturday, I like to pause the news for a day and bring you an interview or a behind the scenes look at the world around electric transport. We call them our Saturday specials. And today, we're going to head to Yorkshire in England to talk about converting classic cars to EV power. E-Dub Trips is a company that started off converting their very first van, their VW camper van, from one of those petrol-powered classic VW campers to a state-of-the-art EV, combining the iconic classic styling with cutting-edge electric technology. You get that desirable camper lifestyle with no fuel costs and zero emissions. You can hire it out from these guys and go on little holidays, weddings, road trips, things like that. It features a best-selling battery packs from the Nissan Leaf in their latest concoction, which is conversions of old cars and giving those classic campers many decades of extra life, well beyond what a simple engine upgrade could possibly give you. We've got lots of things to ask about converting, in general, classic cars to EV power. Uh, It's a um, a topic that's been in the news lately, with Jaguar confirming that their E-Type will be going into production with I-Pace technology and even conversions as well, uh, which is entirely reversible, they say, to maintain the integrity of it being a classic Jaguar E-Type, but with an electric powertrain inside. So let's find all about converting those classic VW campers to EV power. Joined on the line today by Kit Lacey. Hello, Kit. Thank you. You're very welcome. Cheers, Martin. We want to find out more about converting classic cars, reusing old parts, and how people can get a taste of those for maybe a little weekend trip to begin with. So tell us a little bit more about, let's start off, let's set the table. Tell me about Edub Trips, which is your company and what you're all about. So Edub Trips um, was an idea that popped into my head about five years ago, um, and it came from the simple thought process of, um, is, it, is it possible to combine uh, kind of classic vehicles such as iconic VW camper vans uh, with modern electric vehicle technology? Um, and after a, a reasonable conversation with my um, my mum, who's business partner, she's also um, a kind of engineer within um, electric vehicle uh, management, bits and pieces like that, a lecturer up at um, Teesside University. We came to the conclusion, yeah, it's probably possible. So why don't we give it a go? Uh, so Edo Trips was born in 2013 uh, with the ambition for it to be a very unique uh, experience business for people to be able to hire kind of traditional classic camper vans but with a a 21st century twist of it being completely 100% electric drive. Now we live down on the south coast of England, actually somewhere called Pool, which is kind of full of surfers. My wife is a, I think, a frustrated surf chick and has always wanted to hire a classic VW camper van to maybe drive around the southwest of England or something, and then, and then we'll see one on the side of the road. The air-cooled engine not coping very well with the summer heat, and of course. This solves the big problem of how do we go away in a classic camper van and be totally sure that the drivetrain isn't going to overheat. So really, this is the perfect vehicle. Did you have any hesitation? Was it always going to be right? We're doing the camper. Uh, No, there was no hesitation at all. It was that, um, yeah, like I said, it's that iconic thing. And you've hit the nail on the head there is that the classic camper is is, is somewhat of a um, a kind of pipe dream for a lot of people. And I think a lot of people approach it with maybe a little bit of naivety and expect it to be, you know, completely rosy and everything's beautiful. But interesting conversations at the VW festival in Harewood at the weekend and a lot of people have that mindset of actually if it doesn't break down at the side of the road then I haven't got an excuse to put the kettle on Uh, it's almost part of the the DNA of owning one Um, but yeah you're exactly right it kind of slips people's minds slightly with the romantic idea of a camper but yeah uh, swapping the entire engine drivetrain system for electric um, means you're gonna have to find other excuses to pull over and pop the kettle on. Okay so lots of people listening to the podcast really interested in things like conversions and electric powertrains, not just buying a new car, but it's the whole part of the ecosystem that people who listen to this show are really curious about. So uh, as an expert, take us, you've been doing this for four or five years almost, take us back to the beginning. You start with a donor vehicle, 
Uh, how do you choose that? And then what happens next? So from our perspective, um, I mean, I'm, I'm big into electric vehicle technology. We own a, a Leaf, the wife and I, um, and then my parents own a, a Kia Soul, a BMW i3. So we're, we're thoroughly on board with that. But I do appreciate that the adoption for kind of a day to day running vehicle is a bit of a mindset to really switch on. Whereas a camper van, a classic camper van, I think just works. Um, it's just that idea of you've got a classic vehicle that's not it wasn't built for motorways. It wasn't built for for massively long journeys, as you said, you know, having to pull over and cool down. It's just it's built for exploring. It's built for pottering around the countryside. So to tailor that with an electric drive is perfect because you've got your power. You're not having to go, uh, you know, hundreds of miles at a time. You're stopping over and you're, and you're plugging in. Electricity is at your campsites. You're already plugging in as you would normally. And so from our perspective of looking at vehicles, the classics are the best. The classics work perfectly, especially BWs, which are so infinitely customizable. So we literally look for a solid body. That's all we really care about. The, the vehicle that we started with, um, which is uh, we call Indy, um, she's actually from the States. Um, so she's a left-hand drive conversion. Uh, she was a shell when we bought her. She was very solid bodywork, and that was it. No engine, no windows, no interiors, no nothing. But that for us is absolutely perfect. Oh, literally. So no interior and all those kind of things. So what do you you start again, or do you look to refurb original parts? How do you do that? So from our perspective we wanted to make something truly unique and so having a camper van that was a blank canvas was perfect for that the camper van that you see on our website we were able to create something that we really wanted to from scratch in terms of from the conversion perspective so when someone comes to us we get kind of part and part of people who come to us with with no vehicle and just a, a nice idea and some people who've who've got a vehicle themselves and they say how can we put electric into this we completely go by the customer so because it's so infinitely customizable it's really straightforward it's it's simply a case of well what do you want and let's work it out because we've got so many contacts both within the camper van industry of people who can do those jobs but also as you said being specialists within the electric vehicle conversion market anything's possible really okay so we start with a donor vehicle and out of that comes the combustion engine even if it comes with one not yep. gonna not gonna need that so out comes the engine out comes what else uh, transmission or do you use that so in our current vehicle we have used the original transition for a couple of reasons one it was a bit easier just to bolt a motor straight onto the existing gearbox and then secondly it kind of keeps a bit of nostalgia of having to to mix through the gears as you're driving along and generally does give better range so for our first vehicle um, we thought let's get the most range out of this as possible when we started the conversion so we kept the transmission which which gives you better performance within energy usage so one of the things about electric electric vehicle conversions is the parts that go into them so is there i mean is there a preference from your perspective is it that you would look for an old nissan leaf you know do you feel good about finding a nissan leaf that's maybe been in a crash but you can reuse the motor or is it is it preferable like we want to start with new motor new batteries or those kind of things the packages that we have available from Nissan are brand new kits that haven't been used. Kind of second, yeah, secondhand ones, so test models, yeah, as you say, are ones that have been in accidents um, where the batteries are absolutely fine, but the vehicle's in pieces. Those are available. They, again, from a production point of view, they're a little bit harder to come by. So they appear kind of as and when every now and then. So to rely on that as a, as a pipeline product and really it's not saving you tons of cash so it's saving you some money but not loads so from my perspective i would i would say put in a little bit more money make sure you're getting kind of brand new and, and keeping that um, reliability and the kind of lifespan of the batteries through the as long as possible this kind of work at the moment and it always will be all conversion stuff it, it is very labor intensive obviously the more you do the more you learn and the, the, the quicker you can get it, it if somebody was listening right now and thought, oh, I'd, I'd like to buy one of those, is it kind of prohibitively expensive to buy one? Is it more something that people should hire for the weekend and have the experience? It depends on your mindset of, of what you're trying to achieve, I suppose. Um, if it's one of those... I would love one, which is a lot of, of people's perspective. And they've actually, you know, they've had a little think about it and they go, no, genuinely, you know, we've got space on the drive. We could take it away for, a, you know, quite a few weekends a year or sounds like your wife would take it surfing. There's loads of options there. So then it's thinking about, OK, so I've thought about actually accommodating a classic vehicle into my life, as it were. Um, then, yeah, going towards um, buying one like we've got on the website. Um, so configuring one from scratch um, is a really good option. The higher thing is something that we specialise in. 
version. So our camper van is the it's the only all electric classic camper van to hire in the world, which is quite unique. So if it's something where people are thinking, do you know what? I love this idea, but I'd love to try it, you know, just to just to get a little taste of this. Sure. Come for a hire. Check, check on the website. The uh, availability is all on there. Come up and see us up in North Yorkshire and, and take it out for a spin because it's really great fun. So using this, so we've got the classic camper shell that you then put this new drivetrain into. We're using a Nissan Leaf 24 kilowatt hour battery and parts for well-proven technology, I should add as well. It's been around for a very long time and many millions of miles under its belt for kind of from a technology point of view. Someone's taking, so someone who's never driven an EV before, but they think, you know what, let's hire, let's hire a, an electric camper van for the weekend. What are the things that they need to bear in mind using that, uh, that 24 kilowatt hour Leaf stuff? So how far between charges? What kind of performance they're going to get out of it? Driving the classic camper van, it's in my mind, it's, it's that best mix of of both worlds is you've got those iconic looks, the nostalgia that goes with one. So many of our customers, um, either uh, their parents had one when they were young or maybe they, even they did or they've, they've always loved it. So just driving around in one and, and everyone smiling at them and waving and being able to wave back is, is just so much fun. And then you combine that with something which has at, at least twice the horsepower of the original vehicle. So conquering the countryside is, is so easy. It's so straightforward. So in a way, a lot of our customers have never driven a camper van before or, or an electric vehicle and that's that's really normal it's almost a bit of a blessing really because they're not used to um, taking out a classic camper and having to pull over the side of the road and let it cool down or having to approach a hill and seeing those percentage grades on the side of the road and wondering oh am I going to make it because um, our e-dub will, will conquer it no problem it's more powerful than it needs to be um, which again was intentional and then in terms of uh, driving range so again one of one of my bugbears I suppose with um, with the industry is that um, major car manufacturers are still fixed on providing the kind of best case scenario for their vehicles. So you see this in uh, petrol vehicles with miles per gallon. You know, no way are you ever going to achieve that miles per gallon, but they put that figure out there to kind of make it look good. And they do the same with range. So you look at uh, buying an electric vehicle and they give you a completely over the top impossible range that's never going to be achievable. So we approach it from from a very different perspective. So rather than giving you a false idea of how far you can go, we'd rather give you a minimum. So we set with our camper van, which we've been running for, you know, started building it four years ago. It's been running for the last two years, really great. We say to our customers, it's best to plan 50 miles range per day. And that means that um, that accounts for any driving uh, style. It accounts for any weather. It accounts for any size party or how much luggage you're taking. We know that it will achieve that amount of mileage per day. And then obviously you're just charging overnight. So when you arrive at the campsites, you plug in as you would as normal. And that's the best way to think about it. And our customers find that really, really good as a way of thinking about um, this particular vehicle. Is it the complete Leaf experience? So Chatamo plug, quite fast charging. Do you explain all that kind of stuff to them? So yeah, the, the Leaf part, so actually the, just to clarify, the Leaf system um, is something which we, we now have a partnership with. So when we started building our camper van that we use for hire, these packages weren't available. So the packages that we have available with our current vehicle to hire is still using uh, lithium batteries. Um, it's still uh, got the, nearly the performance of a Leaf. So for the hire vehicle specifically, uh, there's no rapid charging on there, but ultimately the places that you're going won't have rapid charging either because where we're based is right between the North York Moors and the Yorkshire Dales. So you're off either east or west from where we are and there aren't any rapid charges. So you're not going to miss it. But with the new system, so with the conversion website that we launched at the weekend, we've now got those Nissan parts ready to go off the shelf, as it were. Uh, and yes, they include more power again. So by by trialing our E-Dub for hire, thinking about conversion, you've all got to have in the back of your mind, actually, you're going to be getting something even more powerful than what we have there. And the rapid charging is included um, with the, the new conversion packages as well. So over the, uh, re you were recently at a, um, a sort of VW festival, is that right? What's the reaction? What's the reaction from the kind of hardcore VW fans? So that was, yeah, I remember the first show we went to, which was, I think, last March. And that was my biggest fear, is going into one of these hardcore VW scenes 
and and people kind of crowding around and, and giving us a bit of a, a, a kind of turned up nose type approach to you can't do that to a VW. We were really surprised both at that festival and and at the one that we've just had at the weekend of just how accommodating everyone is. People are starting to recognise that electric vehicle technology is the future. And they're starting to realise that you know things like Teslas and, and superchargers, and so it's not as strange to people as it used to be, even just a couple of years ago. I think over the full weekend, so we had half of Friday, all day Saturday, all day Sunday. I think we had two people who were interested, but still kind of said, "I'd rather keep my my petrol engine," and that's fine. But it's amazing how many people who you would look at and you think, "Oh yeah, they're going to be quite hardcore VW fans." They would come at you with something like, "Well, it's the future. It's the way everything's." going to go they're really impressed by what we're doing keeping classic cars on the road is something that ev technology is excellent for from your perspective and on a kind of general do you think this is something that we've barely scratched the surface of in terms of taking these classic cars and giving them a a whole second life completely yeah it barely scratched the surface may even be too small too big a phrase for what's actually going on at the moment um there's there's a couple of companies uh, around the world so there's a couple of companies here in the uk that deal with kind of electric vehicle conversion from from pre-existing vehicles there's a a company in, in wales electric classic cars and then there's indra uh, down south as well in Herefordshire. And there's a couple over in the States. So there's Electric, um, a couple of the companies over there. And they've they've caught this. They've seen that actually electric vehicle technology can go into any vehicle. And actually the more classic it is, the better. It makes so much sense to me. So our vehicle, for example, is um, 45 years old. Now that it's got electric vehicle technology, there's no reason why it can't be around for another 45 years. Well, maybe apart from the British, the, the British weather isn't always too kind to uh, to to metal. I mean, you got yours from America. Was it somewhere like uh, California, where it had hadn't seen rain in the last twenty years? It was. It was from um, Indiana, uh, a town called Andrews in Indiana. So this is fascinating technology. If people just want to find out more about what you're doing, what's the best way to to contact you or to to learn a bit more? So we have a couple of websites available, one specifically for our hire service and one for our um, kind of conversion and build service. Um, the hire is edubtrips.co.uk and conversion edubconversions.co.uk. There's loads of info on there and, and on both of those, there's really simple ways to get in touch. So drop us a line. We'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. On a personal note then, so what got you into driving uh, electric cars for you and your family? I love new technology. Absolutely love it. So it's always been one of those things of, you know, if new things are coming out, if there's new kind of future stuff that's been developed, that's always been something that's been really exciting to me. And so when you start to see, you know, like the original leaf and you start to see the the charge points along the motorways and then you just start to, it doesn't take long to think about it and go, yeah, I can make that fit into my life without much difficulties. Um, I also enjoy, I think, being part of fixing a problem. So when you're looking at, even with the, with the when the when the kind of electric vehicle market was very new um, and there were lots of little problems with things like the charging systems and, and the government grants and things like that, I quite enjoyed being almost part of the ironing, you know, ironing out the creases in that process. Um, so having to, you know, call up these companies and talk to them and say, look, this is how I see it. This is what I think we need to do. Um, and helping with that is something that's already always been quite um, quite a, a drive for me as well, personally. What changed when you started driving an EV? What changed for the better? And what were the the compromises that you had to make? Before an EV, we knew that our biggest journey as a family, so it's all specific, is is the short answer. I, I wouldn't say to anybody... That, that just in a general sense that electric vehicles are for you and that you can take an electric vehicle and plonk it into your normal day-to-day habits and it will be absolutely perfect. Because how you drive an electric vehicle is different. I'm not saying it's worse, it is better, but it does require a bit of a brain change. But once you've got it, you've got it. And so for us, it was, we knew that our longest journey that we would ever make is we have family actually down in Poole, where you are. Um, we have family down there. And so we used to, when we would drive down to visit, we would stop twice on the way down. We'd stop at Leicester Forest Services and we'd stop at Newbury Services. And that was our route. And so we knew we couldn't take an electric vehicle until um, that was uh, available and that was possible with an EV. And so basically the the second generation uh, Nissan Leaf uh, with the 30 kilowatt hour pack did that for us perfectly. Uh, so since switching to the Leaf last September, we still do those journeys and we, our journey is no different. We still stop at the same service stations, we, except we now plug in rather than just park up. We still spend the same amount of time in those service stations, grabbing a coffee and going to the loo and picking up some food. 
and then we set off again just as normal there's there's literally no difference to what we do i think a lot of people would echo your your experience so what's what's next for the company and the two different the two different company really the, the trips and the conversions what's on the horizon for you so conversions is really exciting for us right now so higher was our kind of way into the market and our way of learning when we set out with the company we didn't actually expect to become kind of field experts in this um, we just expected to to kind of use other experts and use other people's expertise and, and experiences to to create just a, a higher company. But in the end, because I think it's quite new and quite developing, we were forced to to learn as we went. And so we kind of became experts in the field without really meaning to. But that's been really exciting because we've been able to build relationships with companies to provide these parts that we've been talking about today. And so I'm really excited because, as I said, I, I think we've barely scratched the surface in terms of classic vehicles to electric. Every time I see a classic vehicle, not just a camper van, but any type of classic vehicle, if I like the look of it, I'll say something on the lines of you can put batteries in that. It's just become a little catchphrase that me and my wife have as we're driving around. And so to see those vehicles and yet know that they might break down and that they might overheat and that parts are becoming less and less available makes me a bit sad. And I look at that and go, if you would just switch that for electric, the, the possibilities of how that can perform are endless. So our conversion service is, is really exciting. We'd love to have the kind of hybrid between the two is we'd love to have little kind of franchise either trip stations around the country. So we're based in North Yorkshire. I'd love to have one down with you guys in New Forest. I'd love to have one over in Cornwall, maybe Snowdonia, Northumberland, you know, anywhere there's a gorgeous national park. I would love to have a camper van, electric camper van hire company based. Um, so we've got little franchise options available too uh, through the website. And that, that's, I think, the thing that's most exciting for me is to see these more kind of uh, known about and used uh, throughout the country. I'm sure we uh, people now will be following your progress of the thousands of people that listen around the world to the podcast, and uh, I certainly will myself for one. Thank you so much for your time today. You're very welcome. Cheers. Thanks, Martin. Well, thank you very much to Kit and the team at Edub Trips and Edub Conversions for filling us in on what it's like to give those iconic VW campers, those surfer campers, uh, a second leaf of lease of life. Well, thank you very much for listening today. I want to say a heartfelt thank you to 65 patrons of this show who keep us going, pay the bills, keep the lights on, and then we get to spread the word about EVs. Thank you particularly to those who support the podcast at $10 or more. Every Saturday, they get the bonus news episode they might be listening to that right now over on Patreon. Thank you, Phil Roberts, Cesar Trujillo, David Allen, Sasha Pallenberg, Damien, Louis Hopkin, Ashley, Ashley Hill, Biard Fuchstack. Hello to Chris Benson, David Prescott, John Bailey, John H. Mayer III, John Timmis, Marcel Lohman, Matthew Ellis, Neil E. Roberts, Paul Seeger Smith, Philippe Calve, Rod James, and Scott Callahan. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much for all of the support that you give this podcast and keeping us going. 221 previous episodes online right now. Use your podcast places, YouTube, the blog, evnewsdaily.com if you want to download it and listen to some of the previous ones. If in return... You can do me a little mini favour and give us a rate and review on your favourite platform. It really helps out. Of course, if you want to check out the Patreon, uh, that would be amazing. Patreon.com slash evnewsdaily. But don't feel like that's anything that you have to do. Uh, come and say hi on the socials by searching for evnewsdaily. Have a wonderful day and I'll catch you tomorrow.